Hi, I'm Jilly G. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make my version of gluten-free red velvet cupcakes. And red velvet cupcakes are known for being bright red. I'm kind of going with an old-fashioned version of this recipe today. Well, and then it's kind of a new version because it's my gluten-free version. So I do have my cupcake uh, tins ready to go. I have some really cute little liners here. And then this recipe makes about 14, so I've got that many. I've got everything ready at room temperature, but the first thing we're gonna do is get started on the frosting. And the funny thing about red velvet cupcakes is I'm actually making what was once thought to be the original frosting for a red velvet cupcake, which is called ermine frosting. And it's a milk and flour mixture that you cook, of course, with honey or sugar, and then you cook that till it's really thick and then whip it into your butter. So I thought I would do that frosting instead of what is now a traditional cream cheese frosting with red velvet cupcakes. I also will not be using any food coloring. Back when, you know, this recipe was originally made or whoever thought it up or whatever, they didn't really have red food coloring. And there was some kind of chemical reaction between the cocoa and the other ingredients that would create kind of a red color. I don't expect my cupcakes to have that kind of reaction. Ingredients nowadays aren't made the same as they were back in the 1800s or whenever it was. Do your own research on the internet and, and look it up. But I don't want to use any red food coloring. So I expect that they will be kind of a slight brownish color because of the cocoa powder, which isn't very much at all. But I'm kind of hoping that maybe it will have a slight reddish tint. And some recipes, if you go back far enough, they used beet juice to give it the red color. I don't have any beet juice, but I think it would be fun to try that. And I think it would make a delicious cupcake. But this is what I'm using today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start cooking my flour and milk ingredients for the frosting. Actually, the first thing I'm gonna do is preheat my oven to 350. So I've got a large saucepan here. And then I've got two and a quarter cups of milk. I've got just shy of a half a cup of honey. And then I'm gonna go about a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna turn this on medium. And then I've got a half a cup of white rice flour. I decided to just go with white rice flour instead of my mix because I'm not sure how my almond flour and the coconut flour will work in this frosting recipe. In fact, I've not ever made this frosting recipe gluten-free before. So you'll get to experience it the same time I do. And I expect this to go a little bit quicker just because of the honey. We don't have to wait for the honey to dissolve like sugar does. We want to bring this up to a boil, stirring constantly until it gets really thick. I also went with white rice flour because it dissolves really well in liquids. I also didn't want to go with a starch, like corn starch or tapioca starch. I don't think it has enough structure that gives this frosting its structure. So what we're looking for is to cook this until it's really thick, like a pudding consistency. If you're using a flour blend that has xanthan gum in it or some kind of binder or thickener like that, you might end up with a thicker result as well. My mixture is looking very thick but it hasn't really started boiling yet. Oh, there it goes. I kind of feel like I made glue. <laughs> it looks really thick. I'm gonna stir in one teaspoon of vanilla. And then I have a shallow little casserole dish here. I'm gonna pour it in. I prefer to use something that's shallow because then it cools off a little bit quicker. So we wanna cover this with plastic wrap. We don't want it to develop a skin. I'm gonna go directly on our milk and flour pudding here. You know, I've had this kind of frosting before. Of course, it's been many, many, many years. But I don't really want to taste it. I guess maybe I should taste it, but I, I don't know why I think it will taste horrible. Let's see. 
It's the strangest thing. It tastes exactly what it is. Kind of like a really thick flour pudding with just a little hint of honey and vanilla. I'm gonna put it on a cooling rack just to help it cool off quicker. So now for my ingredients for my red velvet cupcakes. I've got one and a half cups of my gluten-free flour. I've got a half a teaspoon of baking soda and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then I'm gonna go with my quarter cup of cocoa powder. I always sift my cocoa powder, well, most of the time. But you wanna sift your cocoa powder because sometimes it has lumps. And some red velvet cupcake recipes call for even less cocoa powder. If you've ever had a red velvet cupcake, you'll notice that there is kind of a slight cocoa flavor, but really not very much. So my dry ingredients are all mixed together. I've got three eggs here. We're gonna separate the eggs. I've got a bowl for my whites and a bowl for my yolks. And a bowl to crack them in. There's my three egg yolks and my three egg whites. We wanna whip our egg whites to soft peaks. Those are still soft, but almost to stiff peaks. I'm gonna soften my butter. So I've got a half cup of butter, really soft. I'm gonna whip this up. You could make this with a stand mixer, but a hand mixer works just fine. So this is three quarters of a cup of honey. And then just mix your butter and honey together. In goes my three egg yolks, two teaspoons of vanilla, one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, Once you've got that all mixed together, I've got my dry ingredients. I also have one cup of sour cream, and then I have a half a cup of whole fat kefir here. It's plain. You don't want a flavor to go in here. You could also use buttermilk. In fact, the original recipe is buttermilk, but I find that kefir works perfectly. So I'm gonna go a little bit of dry ingredients, probably about a third. I'm gonna scrape my bowl down just so everything gets mixed in. I'm gonna add in my one cup of sour cream. Mix this all really well. Well, oh, there goes the rest of my dry ingredients. I was gonna add this in in thirds, but this is fine. Now for my half a cup of kefir. Once you've got everything all mixed together, I'm gonna to switch to my spatula, give everything a really good scrape, make sure nothing got missed that's hanging out in the bottom. And now I'm gonna add in a couple of scoops of my egg whites maybe about a third of my egg whites. And then I'm gonna mix it all around, not being super gentle, just to help lighten up my batter. Now I'll go another third of my egg whites and fold them in gently. Now the rest of my egg whites Once you've got your egg whites all mixed in, I'm gonna bring over my muffin pans, cupcake pans today. And then I've got a spoon. We wanna fill these a little over halfway full. 
And what I usually do is I go one spoonful per cup and then go back and make sure they're all even. The funniest thing, this batter looks like a Frosty from Wendy's. <laughs> if you don't have Wendy's where you live, it's a fast food place and it's kind of like a chocolate milkshake. Because my batter is so light and fluffy, I'm filling them a little bit more than halfway full. And I ended up getting a couple of more cupcake liners. I don't want to fill these all the way to the top and have them explode out of the pan. So I said this makes 14 cupcakes. I'm getting 18 cupcakes. So these will go in the oven again at 350. I start checking them at 18 minutes. And then when a toothpick comes out clean, they're done. There's my cat. went for about 20-ish minutes. And you know, it, they almost have kind of a reddish tint to them. Or I'll say light tan, pinkish, maybe. I wouldn't call these red velvet, but they do have a kind of a pinkish tint. I'm gonna let these cool off about 10 minutes in the pan and then put them on my cooling racks. My cupcakes are completely cooled off and they sunk in the middle. Sometimes that happens. And they're not all exactly the same size, and that's fine too. But I really am liking the color. Not a traditional bright red, red velvet cupcake, but that's fine with me. So here is my flour and milk and honey mixture. And it is completely cooled off, and it's really set. You don't want your cupcakes to be warm, and you don't want this to be warm. It will melt your butter, and then it's savable. All you have to do is you just take your bowl and stick it all in the fridge and then re-whip it. But if this is hot, it will melt your frosting. And then if your cupcakes are too hot, it will melt your frosting. So I've got my butter that is actually almost melting because it's been sitting on the stove. And this is half a cup of butter. I'm gonna whip my butter. I'll start out on low speed and then I'll whip it on high speed. Oh, maybe five minutes to get it nice and fluffy. I'm about two minutes in. I wanna scrape the bowl down and make sure all of this butter is getting whipped. And I'm really curious how this frosting is gonna turn out. My other buttercream recipes is usually a, a cup of butter. This is only a half a cup of butter and I have more of my flour mixture. The research that I've done on this type of frosting is it's not overly sweet, which is what I'm going for. And I'm also looking for a pipeable frosting or buttercream. My butter is really pale, really fluffy. I'm gonna give it a really good mix. So with the mixer on low speed, I'm gonna add in a little bit at a time my flour, milk, and honey mixture. added in about half of my paste mixture. I do want to scrape down the bowl and see what's happening. Hmm. I think I'm going to add a little bit more. Descriptions of this buttercream are similar to like a whipped cream frosting or a whipped cream buttercream. I'm a little concerned I don't have the right amount of butter in here for the amount of flour mixture. But it really is kind of a nice texture. It looks nice anyways. I'm gonna taste it. 
Hmm. You know, I was worried that it would have, oh, maybe a gritty texture from the rice flour, but it doesn't. Taste it again. Hmm. And you know, it, it really isn't really that sweet at all. The texture is actually really interesting. If you've been watching my channel for very long, I've done a couple of collaborations with Our Heritage Works, and he and I recently have been discussing one of his recent videos for a copycat gluten-free version of oatmeal cream pies. And you know, I think this right here might be the filling that you're looking for. Our Heritage Works, let me know. It's kind of funny when you get two people that have been gluten-free for a really long time and you try to make a recipe from memory, you don't always hit the mark. But maybe, maybe this is what you're looking for. Because I've got so much of my flour mixture left, I don't want to waste it. And I bet you I could freeze it. I'm trying to determine if I have enough to frost my cupcakes. And I probably do. Even though they are sunk in a little bit. And maybe with this type of a frosting, people don't want to have a lot of frosting. And you know, it's so interesting, the salt is, you can't, it doesn't taste salty, but you notice that it's in there and it just kind of gives it a nice flavor. Oh, what to do, what to do. If I use more of this, that has the honey in there. So it will balance out the sweetness, I think. But I think I'll need more butter. Or maybe I'll just go for it. Maybe I'll just go for it and follow the recipe exactly and put all of this in. Let's see what happens and do that. I mean, worst case scenario, we'll just add more butter. It really is changing the texture. Huh, interesting. That was the last spoonful. I'm gonna scrape off my spatula and give the bowl a scrape. looks really interesting. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but it almost looks like, oh, when you're mixing eggs and butter and sugar or honey, and it, it looks like it's gonna break. But I think that's just the texture of the rice flour. But look at this, huh? I was kind of concerned that it wouldn't be very fluffy, but look at it with just a half a cup of butter. I mean, it is oozing. I don't know that it will hold its shape if I pipe it. I need to taste it again. It really isn't very sweet at all. And it is creamy. That's so interesting. I was worried that with all of that, with such a small amount of butter, it would, it would be gritty. And you can definitely tell that there's something in it. So maybe, maybe a different gluten-free flour might have a better texture. But the flavor is really good. And actually, if you're not me, you might not enjoy this frosting or buttercream because it really isn't very sweet at all. I've mentioned before, my taste buds are ruined by using honey and not using sugar. Things that taste just right to me are not sweet enough for somebody that eats regular sugar. But the texture is really nice. There's my other cat. I think it's too soft to use a piping bag. And I'm almost tempted to get another stick of butter and see what will happen with another stick of butter. But paired with a cupcake, let's find out. And you know, because my cupcake sunk in the middle, you have a little pocket there for frosting or buttercream. And you know, I think it's just gonna ooze all over everything. Try not to get any crumbs. I'm gonna get another stick of butter. So I got another stick of butter 
and I've just been whipping it the exact same as the first stick of butter till it's light and fluffy and paler in color and then I'm just going to add this back into here on low speed. You know what it looks like? It actually looks like vanilla ice cream. If you make homemade vanilla ice cream. That's actually what the texture looks like. I'm going to scrape down the bowl just to make sure everything's getting mixed in. And keep going. That is the last of my flour paste butter mixture. I'm going to scrape the bowl down one more time and my spatula just to get everything all mixed in and then I'm going to whip it on high speed. I want to see how long it takes to plop back in there. Huh. And I mentioned Our Heritage Works. His YouTube channel is also gluten free. So for those of you that are new here to my channel, head over to his channel and check him out. He's got a lot of wonderful gluten-free recipes as well. I certainly doubled in volume with that butter and it still is oozing but not as much as before. Now with this type of frosting or buttercream it does firm up or set up a little bit more in the fridge but again it's gluten-free with rice flour. So I'm not really sure what it's going to do in the fridge. And you know, I don't think I'm going to use my piping bag. You use a piping bag for fast and easy work, but also if you want to make a decorative swirl on top or something. I don't think this will hold a shape. I am going to taste it here. Let's taste this over here. Mmm. That extra stick of butter. It really improved the texture. Wow, that's good. It wasn't a terrible texture to begin with, but that's really good. And it's funny, that extra stick of butter, it really brings out a little bit more of the honey. Definite improvement on texture. And it really does look like vanilla ice cream. It feels like a really light buttercream. And I don't know that this would be the best idea for a filling like between cake layers. If you're making a two or three layer cake, the texture of it I think would just squish out under the weight of the other cake layers. But for little cupcakes, huh. And it seems to be staying in place. Maybe it's a good thing that my cupcakes have sunk in the middle. We'll hold all this buttercream in. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have some buttercream left over. I'm really curious to see if it freezes well. You know, and I'm just thinking to myself, if you decided to watch this video because you want an amazing red velvet cupcake recipe, you might have think you've come to the wrong place. They're not red. It's not cream cheese buttercream. Which for that matter, I could have added in some cream cheese instead of butter to make this a little bit bulked up and make it hold its shape a little bit more. Let me know in the comments. Let me know if this is a frosting or buttercream that you used to make. It's almost unheard of now. And you know, I really wonder if it's because it's not very sweet at all. You know, they always talk about depression era recipes where there wasn't a lot of sugar around and also butter. This is a really good buttercream recipe that doesn't use very much butter. It does use milk, but it's not very sweet at all. You wouldn't even have to have powdered sugar on hand. And that being said, because everybody is so used to powdered sugar buttercream nowadays, and that's super sweet, I would also think that that's why people stopped using this one. If you're used to a really sweet buttercream, you'd be disappointed with this. And you would think that you're just eating flour and milk and a little bit of vanilla, because you are. 
And you know, going by how much I'm putting on and how much I've got here in my bowl, I do have quite a bit left, which means I'm going to be making my own gluten-free version of Our Heritage Works oatmeal cream pie cookies. I think this filling will be delicious in there. I think I'll go with my original cupcake here that I was testing out the buttercream. And let's see. Let's see what my cupcake looks like. It's coming away from the paper nice. And I would say it does have a slight reddish tint to it. Not because of the paper either, but it really does have a little bit of a reddish tint. Let's get in here and see what it looks like. I kind of squished it. If somebody offered you one of these cupcakes, you would know for sure that they are homemade. So let's give it a bite. I want to try the, the cake part just by itself. Mmm. That is really good. Just barely, barely a hint of chocolate. Super soft, super moist. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Here goes with my ermine frosting. Hmm. They go really well together. Hmm. It's such an interesting texture. There's my cat again. If you do any research on ermine buttercream, it will tell you that it's kind of kind of the texture of a whipped cream icing. And you know, it really is. It really does kind of have that, I don't even know the word I'm looking for. It really is kind of reminiscent of, of a whipped cream icing. Let me try it again here. Make a mess of everything. It's a big bite. They are delicious. It's a really good gluten-free cupcake. And you know, they look homemade and I don't care. I make, I make homemade cupcakes. They should look homemade. And all in all, it, it's actually really been a fun kind of experiment with this buttercream. I don't know that I would make it again for a cupcake, but it's really, it's really been fun. And it's actually, it is delicious. If I were gonna make a three layer cake or even a two layer cake, this would work as a buttercream to cover the entire cake. I wouldn't use it as a filling in between the layers. If you're making a nine by 13 cake, this would be a really good topping to just slather on all the top of it. That would be a really good use for it. And maybe it's the nature of the white rice flour, or maybe the ratios are a little bit different. There's a lot of different recipes out here for this kind of buttercream. Maybe you will find somewhere else to find a red velvet cupcake recipe. And even though they're not red, it still is a red velvet cupcake. It's not a red, it's a brown velvet cupcake, but that's okay. If you guys are health conscious like I am, sometimes we don't enjoy using food coloring, but still a delicious cupcake. They don't look amazing. And the buttercream is definitely worth giving a shot. If you're looking for a buttercream that doesn't use powdered sugar, that doesn't have eggs in it. So this is a really good alternative. Do some research and maybe experiment with some different gluten-free flours and you might come up with a really nice pipeable buttercream. Let me know what you think if you make this recipe. I don't know that you will, but I think you should give it a try. It's a delicious cupcake. But thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and I'll see you on the next one.